Hi, this is Kerry King from Slayer, and you are checking out Loudwire. Hey everyone, Gruhamid here from Loudwire with Kerry King from Slayer. Thank you so much for coming by, man. Absolutely, man. I'm so excited to do Wikipedia Fact or Fiction. For I'm scared. I don't know what I'm getting into. That's the perfect way to go into it. Uh, so, let's prove or disprove some of the stuff that's on Wikipedia. First of all, let's go simple with your name, Carrie Ray King. Yeah, I added in later on. Yeah, I, I thought I was touching was more just a nickname, but dude, that's what that's what people say. You know, when you saw signing earlier today, Carrie <laughs> King. Yeah, yeah. So it just kind of stuck, and then it's I got added, a ring then to I added it. KFK to my signature. And yeah, it's it's all fan generated, really. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so the name is correct. Um, it says you were born in Los Angeles, California. Uh, your father was an aircraft parts inspector, and your mother was an employee of a telephone company. Yeah. True. All right. Let's keep it running. Uh, in 1981, you were at a session trying out for a band. After the session was over, Jeff Hanneman approached you, and the two of you began to play Iron Maiden and Judas Priest songs with the session's drummer. Then after that jam session, Hanneman and yourself decided to start a band? Yes and no. Okay. So what's the, uh, what's the wrong part of that? <coughs> I was in a band with Tom when I was like 16. Okay. And it was my guitar teacher's band and I knew he was grooming me to replace a guitar player. I didn't know why I was 16. I didn't care. I was just like, I think this guy's gonna put me in his band. And you know, for a 16 year old to be in your guitar teacher's band, that's like something important, you know? I'm like, this guy must think a lot of me. But that band didn't hang out, so I'm looking for another band to play with. And in, I don't know if they ever had it in New York City, but the West Coast, we had something called the Recycler. It's ads. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Free ads. Mm -hmm. And that used to be really popular, you know, before the internet and all that fun shit. But, um, so I would look at an ad and I called this band, I think they were, I think they were called Ledger. Ledger. And I don't think they ever did anything, so I'm just saying, I think they were called Ledger. If it wasn't, sorry. Not here. But again, Ledger. I don't think they fucking did anything anyway. So... And Jeff was playing, he had, a, he had his Les Paul out and he's playing guitar at like the reception desk. He's like the dude that told people where to go when they came in the building. Okay. So I went and, and tried out with these guys, which were way more of a, as I remember, Southern rock kind of thing. Huh. Which, if you're talking Leonard Skinner and Molly Hatchet, badass, but not that good. <laughs> um, so I was in there for a little bit. And then when I came out, I stopped and talked to Jeff. And I said, you play a lot of the songs I know. You know, we should get together and, you know, see if we're into playing together. So we did. And in that same time frame, I uh, came across Dave. And I think the first time the three of us played together was in Dave's garage. And we did that maybe a couple times. And I hit up Tom, who I knew mm -hmm. previously, and said, hey, man, I think, I think we got something. Seems pretty cool to us. Check it out and see if you want to be a part. Awesome. All right. Clearing up that stuff. Uh, Slayer was discovered by Brian Slagle, who had recently founded Metal Blade Records. Uh, after he heard Slayer perform a cover of Iron Maiden's Phantom of the Opera. I don't think we ever played Phantom of the Opera all the way through. Okay, fiction. Do you know I know, if it was I know parts of Phantom of the Opera, but I don't, okay. think, I don't think to this day I've ever played that top to bottom. No. I don't think so. We used to play a lot of Maiden. Sure. Um, but Phantom of the Opera wasn't one of them. <clears throat> he saw us play the Woodstock. And I'm sure we did a handful of covers, a handful of originals. Um, and then we were on Metal Massacre 3. Yes. And before we finished recording that, he already gave us a record deal. Totally. All right, wrong Maiden song. Show No Mercy was financed by Tom, uh, who used his earnings from his job as a respiratory therapist, and money was also borrowed from your dad. Tom was a respiratory therapist. He was. I'm not sure if... He had any input from his parents or not? I can't remember. Okay. Um, but my parents did, yeah. You yeah. know. You try not to dig into your parents' pockets, but you know, if that's the only way to get it done, you know, Brian gave us what he gave us. Um, then we had to make ends meet. So yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. If your parents are supportive, no yeah. complaining about that. Uh, it says, due to the imagery and lyrical content of Show No Mercy, Slayer received mail from the PMRC telling the band to stop releasing records. Nah, I don't know about that one. 
I wouldn't be surprised. I can't, I can't say yay or nay to that, and I'm not no. keeping it from you because I really don't give a shit. But I don't, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. if it was mailed to anybody, it wasn't mailed to me. I just love the like. I just love the image of Tipper Gore at a computer or whatever. It's like, stop that's, making that's, records. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Who, what do you care? Fuck off. Show No Mercy tour. Uh, Gene Hoagland was a roadie for you guys, but he was fired after the second show due to lack of knowledge of what to do. Gene Hoagland was a friend of ours, and he used to take pictures of shows. I don't take think he was, pictures of shows. I don't think he was ever. I don't think of him as ever being a roadie. Um, Certainly, he don't was. Remember. He was around, and I know he took pictures, but I don't. I don't think he was part of our crew. Tom's old brother has always been a part of our crew. Right. They did say that on Wikipedia. So, like, uh, I guess then there was no Gene Hoagland firing. I don't think so. I don't think so. I mean, I, he was around, but, you know, maybe he helped out, but I don't think it was ever, like, a, a roadie kind of situation. All right. Fiction. Uh, it said also that Gene worked at a ro as a roadie for Slayer again after the Haunting the Chapel EP came out, uh, after your lighting guy didn't show up one night. And once again, Gene was fired as he thought a roadie only did lighting. Uh, that doesn't ring a bell. That sounded weird to me. So, speaking of haunting the chapel, uh, the sound engineer Bill Meyer, Toyer, thank you, uh, thought that he was going to hell for his part in recording the EP's lyrics. He probably said that in jest. In jest. Bill's, Bill's still a fun guy. I see him every once in a while. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, he did hell. He did the first three, well, two and a half. Mm -hmm. Show no mercy. He did the haunting the chapel and hell awaits. Do you think that's something he'd really believe, or was just no. kind of like a funny thing? I'm sure would... it was just in jest. All right, so he doesn't actually think that. That's no. good. He shouldn't. Uh, in 1984, you joined uh, Dave Mustaine's new band, Megadeth. Uh, Jeff was worried about your decision, and while Mustaine wanted you to play on a permanent basis, you left Megadeth after playing five concerts. I did play Megadeth's first five shows. First five shows, all right. Um, and that being said, I was one of the lucky people, and there's certainly no offense against Kirk Hammett. Kirk's a wonderful friend of mine, but I was lucky enough to see Metallica with Mustaine. And I say that because it's just a rare thing to be able to say that. Um, I, saw them, I saw them play at the Woodstock, and I was so intrigued by Mustaine because he was just ripping on guitar and looking out that way somewhere, and I'm like, I can't do that to this fucking day. You know, so I was just blown away at, at his guitar playing. And then to find out, I think it was through BC Rich, because we all played BC Rich back then. I think it was through BC Rich I found out that, that Dave was inquiring if I would play. And at the end of the day, I thought, this is a gigantic learning situation, you know. And it, I also thought, you know, people would see me and know me from Slayer, because, I mean, we only went to the Bay Area. You know, yeah, that's still when we only got up there. So I think if people saw me, they would, it would at least make them think Slayer. So I had Slayer's best intentions in mind. I didn't go mm -hmm. and say, hey, I'm going to be in Megadeth. I don't, I don't know why anybody can be in Megadeth for more than a couple hours because that guy's crazy. <laughs> any personal experience? Only five shows? Any, First any, five. Any weird experiences with him in those five shows or just... We know he was, he was cooler. Been. He was cooler back then. Oh. Um, I think there's been a lot of drugs and, and funny extracurriculars between now and then that helped shape who he is today. But um, it was good times back then. Um, playing all the venues Slayer played and, and just, I don't know, playing different music. His stuff is definitely more, I don't say intricate because we got intricate parts too, but it's just, he writes riffs in a very different perspective than I, even after playing with him for a number of months, it's still... I wouldn't do it. It's just not my style. Gotcha. Um, it said that the split when you did leave Megadeth, it caused a rift between yourself and Dave Mustaine, which in evolved into a long-running feud between Megadeth and Slayer. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair.